Well, it certainly wasn't the Liverpool that we know, or well, certainly that we've seen over the last two or three years. One of the poorest performances that I think we, we, we've seen under a Jurgen Klopp team. Really, and he, he came out and said that. But it's difficult to be too critical. It's the first game of the season, and you know this team have, have produced so much, and you know that quality's there, and I'm sure we'll see that in abundance this season. What did you see for, as the reasons as to why it wasn't quite there for Liverpool on the day, particularly when we saw the intensity from Liverpool against Manchester City in the Community Shield? Yeah, well, I, th I think the way you know Fulham uh, set up, they did to Liverpool what Liverpool normally do to other teams, almost looked more energetic, uh, more ready for the game of football, really. And that's something that you know I'm sure Jurgen Klopp and the team will be looking at this week. It doesn't happen too often where Liverpool don't look ready for the game of football. But going to a newly promoted team, first game of the season, you know the excitement and the energy that will generate for their supporters is sometimes difficult to stop. But you'd expect the team of Liverpool's quality to do that, but uh, it just wasn't to be. But I mean, it's not the end of the world. There's 37 games to go. Uh, I was going to mention Bobby Firmino to you because I know, obviously, what a fan you are of, of Bobby Firmino. And he's coming for a little bit of criticism after that opening day of the season. Do you feel that's justified? Is there something that he needs to do different? What is it with Bobby at the moment? Well, you say at the moment, it's, it's one game. I mean, he, he's not been a regular in the team now for probably over 12 months since maybe Jota came in. Sadio Mane went through the middle towards the end of last season as well. So... I mean, I, I, you can't be too critical of Bobby Firmino, certainly for what he's done and the miles he's put in for, uh, for this club. But, of course, Liverpool have brought uh, Darwin Nunes for a reason. And I'm sure he'll be playing on Monday night. And Bobby, at this moment, I think will be more of a squad player between now and the end of the season. I'm sure he'll play a huge part. Do Liverpool, though, need to do more in the transfer window before that deadline? Because, obviously, we've seen the injury to Thiago. That is obviously a major blow. And people have been talking about maybe needing that other midfield option anyway. Well... I think most people would say Liverpool's midfield could be strengthened. I don't think that means in terms of numbers. They have enough numbers, but maybe in terms of quality or giving them something different that they don't have in midfield. Now, I would only want Liverpool or Jürgen Klopp to go and buy that midfielder if they get the player that they want. Liverpool's success in the transfer market, a lot has been down to not panicking. And that's what Liverpool can't do what they haven't done in the past, what they can do right now and what they shouldn't do in the future. So if the midfield player that they want is not available, don't get him. But if there's a midfield player out there that they feel has those qualities available, I, I would like them to do it, of course, but don't panic. I mean, you're going to be talking like that before the game against Fulham anyway, hadn't you? There's always been that caveat, look, I'm not going to necessarily move in the transfer window, but if a deal presents itself, it will be a long-term target, not a short-term one. Yeah, and that's the way Liverpool, Liverpool assess things in the transfer market. You think how long they waited for Virgil van Dijk. I mean, the, the deal fell, fell through, I think, in the summer, and they waited till January. They didn't go and get another centre-back because they did need one. And they waited for the guy that they wanted, and you know it's proved very successful. And I'm sure that's what they'll do in the in midfield. And it's not a, having a go at the midfield players that they've got there. It's just the age profile of a lot of the midfield. You know, getting into the 30s. Certainly, Liverpool's first choice midfield and the one that played at Fulham is uh, you know getting to the 30 mark. So you think you know a younger, more energetic player maybe coming in at some stage. But they've got those players in reserve at the moment. But they're, unfortunately, they're all injured. Was there anything else that surprised you from that opening weekend? I mean, some will look at the Manchester United result and say, that was a surprise. Did it come as a surprise to you? Uh, yeah, I mean, listen, no matter how poorly Manchester United are at this moment, you still expect them to be Brighton at home. And they should be Brighton at home, but I think it just shows when a manager's been in the job for two or three years and he's had that real time to sort of implement what he's about in his team. And you could see that with Graham Potter, even though they'd lost big players in the summer. The rest of those players and the way the team was set up, they know exactly what to do. And Manchester United are just not at that stage right now with a new manager. Were you, when you, does that, I mean, in many ways, does it sum up the kind of job that Eric Ten Hag has to do there as well? I mean, people were talking about Manchester United as potentially improving on last season and challenging those those Champions League spots. Do you think that is going to happen this season? I know it's, it's one game, but it, it kind of emphasises the job that Ten Hag has to do. I, I think Man United will improve on last season. I don't think you see how it gets any worse in terms of the points that they got, the goals they conceded. I know it wasn't a great start, I get that. The window's not closed, there's still a couple of weeks to try and get some players in. You know, there's a criticism now at the moment for some of the players to try and bring in. But, you know, I've been in that position myself at Liverpool where you're trying to chase the top teams and, and at times you do find yourself in a, in a situation where you think, should we take a chance on a player? Whereas maybe a Liverpool and a Man City right now don't need to take those chances and that's, you know, that's the benefit of being successful 
I suppose. But you can't really judge the squad until, as I said, the, uh, the windows close and we see where they go from there. But, you know, Ten Hag's got a great pedigree in what he did with Ajax and, and how good they were in the Champions League, built two teams there. So, you know, you have to have faith in the manager. Just finally, there, Jamie, if there's anyone else who's going to get into the mix with City and Liverpool, is the most likely looking Spurs at the moment? Yeah, and, I, and, and a lot of people may be being a little bit down on Chelsea a little bit. Uh, but I still think there's two or three players to come into uh, Stamford Bridge before the window closes, so I think they could look a completely different proposition at the end of August as well. But Spurs with Conte, the results they got against Liverpool and Manchester City last season, we know he's a coach who quite rightly can go up against Klopp and, and Guardiola and, and not feel in any way inferior because of the success he's had uh, here and abroad as well. So, yeah, I think uh, you know, they certainly look a lot better than they did last season. I think they'll join Chelsea in, in the two teams trying to close on the top two.